Palestinians are celebrating in Jerusalem after a week of intense friction surrounding Al Aqsa. The Israeli cabinet finally backed down on its decision to put up metal detectors and security cameras on the entrance to the mosque. That action came after two Israeli police officers were killed by Palestinian gunmen. The ramp up security ignited a wave of protests across Jerusalem and the West Bank, and over the last week, four Palestinians and three Israelis were killed. So why were the protesters so upset? Why was the placing of metal detectors and security cameras in a crowded space so controversial? Let's take a look. Everything that happens in Israel-Palestine should be seen within the context of the 50-year occupation of Jerusalem and the West Bank. After the 1967 war between Israel and its Arab neighbors, Israeli forces occupied East Jerusalem and the Old City, which houses Al-Aqsa. Today, there's an agreement which lets Palestinians run the site under the guardianship of Jordan. But Israel still controls the security surrounding it and has police stationed at its gates 24 hours a day. When any attack happens in the area, Israel's first response is to shut access to the mosque and move its soldiers onto the compound. Following last week's attack, Israeli authorities banned Palestinians from holding the Friday sermon at Al-Aqsa, igniting the first of the protests. In blatant violation of international law, Israel has set up more than 200 checkpoints around the West Bank. They're a physical imposition for Palestinians attempting to travel anywhere, work, school, hospital. For Palestinians, this means harassment and humiliation on a daily basis at the hands of Israeli soldiers. Humiliation, the humiliating people. So while we have to go through metal detectors to get into airports and shopping centers, for Palestinians, metal detectors mean one thing, more checkpoints. They're used to control how many people get in, who gets in, and when people can visit the mosque. On Sunday, Israel allowed Palestinians back into Al-Aqsa, but men under 50 couldn't go in, and the rest had to go through metal detectors. They refused and prayed outside in protest. Al-Aqsa Mosque is known to Muslims as Al-Haram al-Sharif. It's their third holiest site and the place they believe Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. For Palestinians living under occupation or as Arab Israelis with restricted rights, Al-Aqsa also represents something more. It's the only space they have freedom of movement and freedom of speech. The only place they feel exists outside the watch of Israeli soldiers. And when Israel threatened to take that away, they fought back. But while all of this was going on, something more sinister was happening in Parliament. On Wednesday, when the world was focused on the protests, Israeli lawmakers started voting on a new law. If that law is passed, it will require two-thirds of Israeli parliament to agree on giving up any land they occupy in Jerusalem as part of any peace negotiation in the future. So for now, it seems Palestinians may have won a small victory. But are they moving any closer to a just and lasting peace?